Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Beloved, you are most welcome to God's own elect word and prayer meeting. You are most welcome. We are here as elect of God to study the scriptures and to pray. Hallelujah. And so um, I welcome every one of you. Let us come together and then study the scriptures and then also pray. Hallelujah. God richly bless you for being part of this meeting. Hallelujah. God bless you. Uh, today we are going to continue what you started yesterday. And the subject is what will happen to them? What will happen to them? It's a, a, a question kind of a subject that we are treating. Hallelujah. And I believe before we are done with it, you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Getting answer to this question, hallelujah, will be a blessing to you. So I want to encourage you, let's all, all come together and then uh, have answer to this question and be a blessed. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. You are most welcome. Every one of you, Mama Ekulina, you are most welcome. Uh, but before we enter into our Bible studies, let us have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we give thanks to you. We bless your holy name for all that you've done for us. We are so grateful to you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, today too we are here to study your word and to pray. Give us understanding and also the spirit of prayer to pray in accordance with your will. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let every satanic agenda against us be nullified in Jesus' name and let the Lord himself have his own way in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Brother King, God bless you. You are most welcome. As I said, the topic is what will happen to them. We are continuing what we started yesterday. Hallelujah. What will happen to them? Now, according to the Bible, one of the Gentile nations that Apostle Paul was sent to go and preach about the kingdom of God to them was Galatia, a nation of Galatia. And these Galatians believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then so they became Christians. But it got a time that they did something wrong. That Apostle Paul had to write a letter to rebuke them. And the letter that Apostle Paul wrote, there is a lot of lessons that we can learn from this letter. And that is what we are going to do. Hallelujah. We are going to do to learn lessons out of this letter so that we will not make the same mistakes or mistake that they did. Praise the Lord. Mm, wonderful. So yesterday we got our first scripture from the book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. And Apostle Paul wrote and said, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. That is where the issues lie. Uh, this, this scripture makes us to understand that we have different gospel. Praise the Lord. And we can testify to this truth that we have a lot of, a lot of different gospels. A lot of different gospels that are being preached. Hallelujah. And uh, one thing about these Gospels, they look like the original. They look that, like the original. In fact, they take some of the words from the original, mix with their own words, and then bring it to us. So if you're not careful, you will never know that you are receiving a different Gospel. That is what happened to the people of Galen Galatia. Hallelujah. The Galatians, this is what happened to them. They didn't know they are receiving different gospel. It was the Apostle Paul who was matured in the spirit, in the things of the spirit. God to know that these people have received, had received a different gospel. Hallelujah. So they became victim to this, this uh, different gospel thing. Hallelujah. And many gospels have been preached to us. Praise the Lord. Which no, it takes us away from the from the truth. We takes away from the hallelujah from the from the kingdom thing, and 
Many of us, we don't know until God himself had mercy on us and then show us the truth. So it is very important that any gospel that you are listening to, you must be very careful and then listen with carefulness. Don't just follow anything. If possible, get your own Bible, read your own Bible, and so and let the Holy Spirit give you understanding about the Bible so that when somebody is preaching a different gospel to you, you may be able to uh, notice. Amen. Okay, so we got to know that these people turn from God and then follow a different gospel. They turn from God and followed a different gospel, which is the gospel that caused them to be disobedient to God. Hallelujah. And the question was, how did they turn from God? How did they do it? According to Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, Hallelujah. Last time I told you that the scriptures that we've been reading that have been divided into chapters and verses. Originally, it wasn't like that. It was just a straight letter. Praise the Lord. Many of them are originally has a, it's a straight letter. It's a straight writing. But when it came to our modern time and the people were good in uh, working on the Bible, you know, got to know that there is a need to divide them into chapters and then, script, uh, and then verses so that when you are looking for a certain particular verse, you may find it for somewhere. Hallelujah. But the scriptures, originally it was written straightforward without any normal, you know, dividing into chapters and verse, uh, verses. Hallelujah. So some scriptures, the, you can get the real concept or the true concept about the whole issue. Maybe you read from chapter you read from chapter one up to maybe chapter six before you can get the whole concept. That is why I was saying that if you want to establish doctrine and then sometimes you pick only one verse from a certain scripture and then begin to begin to establish as a establish it as a, a doctrine, you may make a mistake because that one verse may not bring the whole complete concept of what the, the writer was saying. Praise the Lord. Uh, so many Christians or many teachers or preachers make these mistakes and that is what we need to be very careful. So from chapter 1 of Galatians down to chapter 6, it's all talking about one issue that the people have sway from God and listening to different gospel. These people sway from God, did not go to the world, were not going back to their idol worship. They were Gentiles. They were not going to the idol worship. They were not going to the world. They are not going to do different things. But they rather, they rather listen to another gospel, which is within the terrain of gospels. Praise the Lord. Mama Meg, you are most welcome. Hallelujah. Every one of you, you are most welcome. Hallelujah. So, this is what happened. And last yesterday I was saying that if somebody falls into sin or immoral sin, it is easy to bring that person back to repentance. But if somebody falls into sin of uh, going back to the law, praise the Lord, or fall into a different gospel. It's very difficult to get a person back into repentance because a person will also think that he's doing the right thing. But when somebody falls into immoral sin or immoral conduct, praise the Lord, that person judges himself. Hallelujah. His conscience judges him that, oh, you are, you are wrong. And it is easy to bring that person to repentance. 
But when the person fall into a different gospel, that's where the that, that's where the 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 the, the 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 danger lies, because the person who also want, want to even quote scripture to defend himself or herself, that's where uh, we get we got to understand the things that Apostle Paul is talking about. So these people were not not falling to any thing wrong, like worshiping idols or doing different things, but they were also listening to gospel preached by some people which were also different gospel. Hallelujah. And that is what the, 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 this scripture is addressing. So, Apostle Paul got to know that, uh, I said, they turn from God by disobeying the truth. They turn from God by disobeying the truth. So, uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 to 2 says, Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law? So the, the, the whole issue is about the law. It's not about idol worship or any other thing. It's talking about the law. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Or by the hearing of the faith. Praise the Lord. So these people hear the faith, receive the Holy Spirit, and yet went back to the law. And Apostle Paul was addressing that issue. Hallelujah. That they, they, are, they are fooling themselves. They are fooling themselves. Amen. So in this case, the scripture is giving us the understanding that when somebody, praise the Lord, becomes a Christian, and he decides to do uh, live by the law. That person has gone away from God. That person has drifted from God. And is now living a life of, a life of insubordination to the truth. He has been disobedient to the truth. As the scripture says, uh, the law was brought by Moses. By the truth and grace was brought by the Lord Jesus Christ. So truth and grace is different from the law, as I've been explaining this thing all the time. The law deals with facts. The law deals with the outer man, the physical action of man. That's what the law deals with. But the truth deals with the inner man. It deals with the heart, the inner man. So the actions of the inner man is what the truth deals with. Hallelujah. And Bible says these people forgot about the truth and then went back to the law. And that's what made them uh, unwise in the sight of Apostle Paul. They become disobedient to the truth because they started living by the law of Moses. Hmm. Okay, so yesterday we asked how did Apostle Paul know? That these people are not more living by the truth, but they are living by the law. How did he know? We got to know from the book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 8 to 11. It says, but then, indeed, when you did not know God, these people did not know God, they were Gentiles. So they were idol worshippers. And they were doing their own things, observing days for idols, Observing seasons for idols, you know, in the idol worship, they also have their holidays and that they observe days and the seasons. Some, the, some time they give holidays and they don't go to work and they consider some days as holy. Hallelujah. So they were also having their laws concerning that thing. And then God also has the same law for Israelite. Praise the Lord. So he said, in those days that you didn't know God, you serve those which by nature are not gods. By nature are not gods. Praise the Lord. Like the like the Roman Catholics or the Greeks, they are, they they name all these names of days that we have. Monday stands for Moon Day. Moon they name it as Moon, so they consider Moon as a god. Praise the Lord as a god that take care 
of the Monday. Hallelujah. Monday, Tuesday has his own God. Thursday, Wednesday has his own God. So they give the names to this. Because originally in the Bible, we don't have these names for the days. Originally, we have first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. And seventh day is called Sabbath. That is a seventh day. It's called Originally, that is what is in the Bible. How God gave it to his people. So we don't have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, uh, Thursday, Friday. They are days of the deity. I believe that they, they believe that there's dates, deity that take care of every day has its own deity. So they take care of all those days. And that's why they give the names today to all those days. Hallelujah. And the Sunday, they think they believe that it's the sun that take care of that day. So they call it Sunday. Sunday. Hallelujah. Moon day. That's the month day. Praise the Lord. So they give names to all those things. Believing that those are the gods that they take care of those days. That is why they serve Sun God. Sun God. They are symbols. Everything about them is about the Sun God. You get it? Yes. That is it. And so in the in the Gentiles, we also have the same thing. Seven uh, uh, days which were created by God. Praise the Lord. Serving them as gods, but they are not gods. So Apostle Paul was telling them that these things by nature, they are not gods. Praise the Lord. But we were serving them as gods. Praise the Lord. So coming to the law, similar to the, the people, we're also do, doing because God gave them days to observe a Sabbath, month to observe a Sabbath, years to observe a Sabbath, seasons to observe a Sabbath. Praise the Lord. So they are also doing similar thing to the to the Gentiles, though they were doing it in honor in honor of God to honor God, but they were doing it to honor cre creatures. Praise the Lord, demons and the spirit. Hallelujah. But the gen, uh, the, uh, the uh, Pharise uh, I said the Pharisees, the Jewish were doing that in honor to God. But they were doing it in honor to the devil. Praise the Lord. That's that a difference. Praise the Lord. And so he said, we're serving God that by nature they are not gods. But now, after you have known God, our, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly element to which you desire again to be to be in bondage? So you came from observing days in honor of Satan, and then you came, you have come to Christ. Now you move from that point, then you go to observing days to honor God in the old testament time which God has done away with because those things make them slaves. Hallelujah. As long as they live by that, according to the scripture, it makes them slaves. And the Lord want, that want, that doesn't want them to be slaves because in the, new, uh, in the New Testament, God wants us to be royal priesthood. We are no more slaves. We are royal priesthood. And the, the Lord doesn't want us to be slaves anymore. That is why he has done away with that law of observing days, seasons, and and, and all those things. Hallelujah. We are royal priesthood. That's what the Lord has made us. We are kings. And queens. That's what the Lord has, Jesus Christ has made us. That is why he doesn't want those days to be. Hallelujah. To be masters over us again. So that we consider them as holy. Remember when the Lord Jesus Christ came. And these people were disturbing with the issue of Sabbath. Sabbath. He says. The. Uh, the, the, the the Son of Man is the Lord over the Sabbath. The Son of Man is the Lord over the Sabbath. That means the Sabbath should not control him. He has to control the Sabbath. Praise the Lord. You get a point. So, that is the point here. But, but that these people want to be in the bondage. Then what were they doing? It says, verse 10 says, You observe days. You observe days. Please. You all those who are observing Sabbath, a Saturday as Sabbath, you are doing it to, to, to that God of Sabbath, not God. God, God has canceled it. 
observe days. Some are observing Sunday as Sabbath. Which is also another demonic thing that somebody can do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because God does not, according to scripture, we Christians do not observe any day as holy. Praise the Lord. Don't observe any day as holy. Christians observe all this as equal. And we worship God in any day. We have to worship God. We worship God. The scripture says, the day when you hear my voice, don't, don't harden your heart. We worship the Lord any day. Praise the Lord. It's not like this time that some have made uh, uh, Sunday special. Some have made Sabbath day special. Some have made uh, Friday special. It's not like that. That's not a practice of the early church. Early church meet every day. And they consider every day as equal. Praise the Lord. And so Apostle Paul was warning them, you observe days and months and seasons, Christmas seasons, Easter seasons. Hallelujah. We observe it. You observe them. I said, when you do that, I say, and, and yes, the verse, seven, verse 11 says, I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. I'm afraid for you. Please, I want, this is why, I, the, the reason why I repeatedly talking about these things is because these things is eating up Christians. It's leading a lot of Christians into destruction without their knowledge. Hallelujah. If you have been hearing this, their testimonies that about when they die and come back to life, and they are saying many people are not going to heaven. That's how they say it. That some put it that way. They are not going to heaven. They when they die, Christians die thousand Christians die today. If only one can have a chance to have it, according to them. So according to their own visions. My question is: how can Christian go to heaven? When they die, after they are mingled up with all things here, after gospel has been, different gospel has been, has been preached to us to mingle things, to mix up things. Hallelujah. And then, how can we die and go to heaven? Praise the Lord. That is the issue here. So Christians, now Christians observe Sabbath days, observe Sunday as Sabbath, observe uh, Christmas seasons, observe seasons, is uh, 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 Easter seasons, and we all break, we brought all this thing into Christianity, and we call it ourselves Christians. Praise the Lord. Even in those days where Apostle Paul was warning them not to observe those days and seasons and years, it was about the Old Testament's commandment. The commandment in the Old Testament, God gave it to the Pharisees, uh, gave it to the uh, uh, Jewish people that they should observe. And even God's own commandment, because the Lord Jesus Christ had done away with, Apostle Paul said, when they observe it, he's afraid for them, because they will lose their salvation. But this time around, it's not even those commandments we are observing as Christians. We are observing Roman Catholics, uh, distant customs, where they believe in Christ, Mass, Christ, Mass, not Christ mass or a Christ mass. They believe in Christ. They do mass for Christ. They be, they believe in this Easter thing, which has nothing to do with death of Christ. And they have uh, you have, have joined it to you no. Know, has he has added it to something about Christ. And for that matter, we believe Christian thoughts or uh, think that we are doing something for Christ, which is, uh, Christ has nothing to do with those things. Praise the Lord. And it's a great delusion. A great delusion on the church. Praise the Lord. No wonder the scripture says, in the last days, people, there will be a great apostasy. There will be a great apostasy. Praise the Lord. And this great apostasy Bible is talking about, it's not a long time ago, when people begin to observe the uh, this thing. Roman Catholics customs. That's where the apostasy started. Praise the Lord. 
That's where the apostasy started. The idol worship, uh, 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 this thing, celebrations. When the church started celebration, or the celebrating all those things, that's where the apostasy started. Have you seen that this time around? I don't know. Ghana here, we are, we are seeing this thing happening here. That they say we have a culture day. Culture day. If where you are, you are coming to whatever you are. If Christians are practicing those things there. Ghana here, we call something like a culture day. And the people, Christians, will dress in their cultural dressing. And say Africa normally will put this cloth on their, on, their, on their chest. The women will put cloth on their chest. And they use bees. And then... Uh, and then they will put some, some marks on their bodies, and then that's all. And they will come to church with their culture day. What culture are you talking about? Don't you know that God also has his own culture? God has his own culture. Read the scriptures, you know. God has his own culture. And this culture that were designed for us, we Gentiles, this culture that were designed for us. Hallelujah. We're, we're designed by our, our, by our, our fetish priests. The idols, the fetish priests, we were, we were depending on them. They directed us spiritual things, the how we can live our culture. God has his own culture. When you read the scriptures, you understand that God has his own culture. Praise the Lord. And we have put away those things and then we are going back to the culture then. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, I were, one of the, we were, we were discussing about this, and then they are telling me that now, even they can dress and hold on to, uh, they, they hold this in fetish priest, the thing they hold. I don't know. I don't know what, what thing they, the fetish priest, they, they hold something that they use. Uh, they dress it and hold it and go to church with the, those things because it's culture day. Come on. How, you look at how far the church has got to. How far the church has got to. So this apostasy thing, that prophecy concerning the church is, is happening. And if you are ignorant, you'll be following it. You'll be following it. Hallelujah. You'll be following it. So I want to advise you, whoever watched this video or is watching, I want to advise you, don't involve yourself in observing of those days or months or the seasons. If it is something trivial, Apostle Paul will never say that I'm afraid for you. If observ observation of days and seasons and all those things is something trivial, it's some, not something serious, Apostle Paul will not write to them and say, I'm afraid for you. Because I, 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 it says, I, I feel like I have wasted my energy on you. Praise the Lord. I have wasted my time on you. I work in vain on you. Why? Because you have started observing these things. That's what I'm talking about. And I keep on talking about till so all the elect will come out from it. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing. I keep on talking about this till so I see the elect coming out from this delusion. Praise the Lord. So that's how Apostle Paul got to know. And one interesting thing about this thing is that these people of Galatians, they receive the Holy Spirit baptism. Paul preached the gospel of the kingdom to them and the Holy Spirit baptized them. So they, obviously, they will be speaking in tongues. They will be seeing vision and revelations. They will be prophesying. All the spiritual gifts to be manifested among them. Yet they went back to the law and began observing. If our days are, they began celebrating Christmas. Hallelujah. Celebrating Easter. Observing Sunday as Sabbath. Or Saturday as Sabbath. Or Friday as Sabbath. Praise the Lord. And they were doing that. And Apostle Paul. Got to know about that. Hallelujah. So the question I ask, since you have received the Holy Spirit baptism, they are speaking in tongues. They are saying visions and revelation. And they gone back to the Lord. What will happen to them? Will the Holy Spirit leave them? Or what will happen? I don't know. I can't tell. 
But let's, to, let's look through the scriptures and see what the scripture says about that situation. Hallelujah. According to James, yesterday we learned. According to James chapter 4 verse 5. It says, oh, do you think that the scripture says in vain? The, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy. At this time he was addressing the people, the church members, who were doing something wrong against the faith. And he was telling them that do you think that the Holy Spirit that came upon us and live in us, what the scripture says about him is in vain. The spirit of God is, is, uh, uh, is, uh, 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 is a being that yearns jealously against, when, well, against us when we do something wrong. Contrary to his will. He yearns jealously. But he says something here. He said, but, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the pr proud, but gives grace to the humble. But he gives more grace. That's where I want to get the point from. So, you may do something that is not right. And the Holy Spirit was, will be yearning jealously against you. Yet, he gives you grace. Yet, he gives you grace. Waiting or expecting you to turn around. Expecting you to turn around. Praise the Lord. So, you may be doing wrong. And yet, you may see the Spirit of God working with you. You may be living wrong life. You may be going things, doing things contrary to the will of God. And yet you'll be seeing Holy Spirit working with you. Why? He's giving you grace, period time. Give grace, period, for you to turn around. Hallelujah. But I have learned from the scriptures that this great period, time of, uh, this great period that the Spirit gave it to us has a limitation. It has a limit. So it's got a point you leave you. Praise the Lord. Some happened to Samson. Samson was warned not to touch deadly things. Rotten things. Because the Holy Spirit was with him. Hallelujah. And Samson touched it. In fact, he got the honey from a dead lion. An ex. Holy Spirit gave him a, gave him a great spirit of time. Praise the Lord. A lot of things Samson was doing wrong. But the Holy Spirit was giving him grace time. Grace period of time. And then, finally, he touches where he doesn't have to touch. Then the Holy Spirit left him. But what happened is, when the Holy Spirit left, left him, he never knew that the Holy Spirit has left him. He, he was not aware. That's where the danger is. So some people, the Holy Spirit give you grace time, period of time, that you should turn from wrong to do the right thing. We've been in the law forsaking the truth. Living by the law. And the Holy Spirit is giving you a period of time. So you are speak, still speaking in tongues. You are still seeing miracles. You are still doing the things. You are seeing those signs and wonders. Praise the Lord. But that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit is in agreement with you. It's only giving you a period of time for you to change. Praise the living God. So he left Samson. Finally, he left Samson. Praise the living God. And another lesson that we learned from so, was that he also received the Holy Spirit as a king and was, was, was taking care of people of Israel. And he began to develop jealous, jealous against David, defile himself with this spirit of jealous, jealousy. And then 
he got a point. The Holy Spirit left him. And that another spirit, evil spirit, came in place. Paul. Uh, Saul. Hallelujah. Feel him. I believe he did not know that the Holy Spirit has left him and another spirit has taken place. So he was looking, when you study the scriptures, you could see that he was always accusing David as being an evil person. He's not a good person. He's like that. He's like that. He didn't know that he himself is the one that had been possessed with different spirit. And the Bible says, he was prophesying just as he started when the Holy Spirit came upon him. He was prophesying with this evil spirit. Hallelujah. So, uh, spiritual things are very dicey. They are, not, they are not stagnant. Or they are not static. That it is just like that. It changes. So some of you, you may live by the law for some time. And if you are not changing... The Holy Spirit leaves you. And then another spirit takes over. Praise the Lord. Hmm. And yesterday we learned that God can be angry with you and still working with you. As we learned from the book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 16 to 19. God was angry with the people of Israel when they were walking on the, when they are going to the land of Canaan. On the way to the land of Canaan, he was angry with them 40 years and was still providing for them, giving them water to drink, giving them food to eat, giving them meat to eat. But he was angry with them. I would say he was angry with them 40 years. Praise the Lord. And after feeding them, doing anything, uh, everything for them, what he did was that he swore that they would never enter into the promised land. Though he was providing to them. But the last thing he told them, they would never enter into the promised land. The same thing could happen to Christians. Praise the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ said something which indicated that the same thing could happen to Christians. According to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 down going. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father. In heaven, the will of the, his father is the commandment, the New Testament commandment, that when we obey, then we will enter into the kingdom of God. Simple. It's not about anything. It's about doing the New Testament commandment that the Lord Jesus Christ gave it to us. Hallelujah. So when you do the will of his father, then you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said, verse 20, Jesus said, many will say to me, in the day, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and does many wonders in your name. And, and then I will say to them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Praise the Lord. The truth is that if you don't obey the New Testament commandment given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ, which says, you shall love one another as I have loved you. In the book of John chapter 13, verse 34. If you don't go by that commandment, and you go by the Old Testament commandment, or go by any other thing, you are being lawlessness. Or you are, sorry, you are being lawless person in the sight of God. Praise the Lord, you are being lawless person in the sight of God. And for that matter, God will tell you, I do not know you. But the issue here is that since you have already received the Holy Spirit, baptism, and then, hallelujah, you see the giftings of the Holy Spirit, which are the gifting that perform miracles and sins, visions and other things, or all other things. That gift will be given to you, hallelujah, and God will not take it from you. So you, you continue to see visions, you continue speaking in tongues, hallelujah. Even in tongues, when the Holy Spirit goes, you can still speak in tongues. Hallelujah, because it's, it has become part of your language that you speak. You continue to do all those things, and yet you perform miracles. And yet the Lord said, I, would, I don't know you. Why? Because you are a lawless person. Lawless, lawless because you did not obey his commandment. You disobeyed the truth, as Paul told the Galatians. Why, what, who told you that you should disobey 
the truth. Who told you that you should not obey the, the truth? Be why? Because they went back to the law. And going back to the law means you are disobeying the truth, which makes you a lawless person in the sight of God. And he said, I do not know you. Praise the Lord. And what were they doing? They were observing days and seasons. Years and months. That what they were doing. And the Christians are doing the same thing today. Which no one advised them to stop. Which no one admonished them to stop. And even when you admonish them to stop, you sound like you are bringing something strange. You are coming up with something strange. Because you are, our pastors have taught us to observe those days, seasons, years, for years. So they have become part of us and sound, sounds like the truth from the Bible, which is not the truth from the Bible. And so when somebody is coming out with some this truth, they, they look at him as somebody coming with a, some, uh, 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 some uh, strange idea, strange something that they have not heard before. Because Christians has bundled into this kind of delusion for many years. So it's, this delusion has become truth to them. And the truth has become a lie to them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. And this will contribute, I believe strongly, this will contribute to the foolish, foolish destiny. Virgins, the foolish virgins has a light, has a lamp without oil. Praise the Lord. It's like having the word of God without grace. Having the word of God without grace. The law is without grace. Praise the Lord. But the truth is with grace. That's what the Bible said. The, uh, the first, first, uh, the, the foolish virgins, they take lamb all right. It's word of God all right, but without grace. So how can they go to heaven? How can they enter into the kingdom of God? Praise the Lord. The law is without grace. It's the truth that has the grace. And if you are going by the law, that means you are without grace. It's like having the lamb without oil. You get a point here. So this one will contribute to the fulfillment of that prophecy concerning the ten virgins. Hallelujah. Remember, when Moses was sent to go and stretch his hand or the rod on the rock to get the water come out for the people to drink, he did wrong. He didn't do as the Lord told him to do. He went and struck the, uh, the, the rock. He made a mistake. Yet the water came. Yet the water came out for the people to drink, drink the, the water. And after that, the Lord told him that you are not going to the promised land. So the miracles will happen. The signs and wonders will happen. The prophecies will come. All those things will come. Yet... The kingdom of God will be far away from you if you don't repent. That is why I'm here to tell everybody under the law, repent. Praise the Lord. Know this for sure. One of this, uh, so, some of the ways that people go under the law is observing days, observing seasons, Sabbath day and seasons and all those things. You are under the law and also paying tithe is part of it. As for when you get the pipe tight, tight aspect, then the people will be crashing their head. And that is the truth. Tight is a commandment from Mount Sinai. Where the Ten Commandments was, was given to Moses, tight was added to it. Leviticus chapter uh, 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 27, verse 30 to 34. Tight is part of it. And all those who are practicing all those things, you are under the law. If you take only one of the law and practice it, Bible says all of them are waiting for you to practice them. You are obligated to practice all of them. And if you don't do it, you are under curse. When you take one law that I'm paying tight, the rest of the laws are waiting for you. Praise the Lord. The rest of the laws are waiting for you. When we say, I'm practicing the law. I'm observing, I'm observing Sabbath. The rest of the laws are waiting for you. 
And if you are not able to do that, you are under cash. Great pastors who are trying to jump the law and go to Abraham. That Abraham paid tight. And so they should pay the tight. You are making a grievous mistake. Pastors who want to jump the law and go to Abraham. Abraham pay tight before the law comes. And then the grace comes. And you are from grace. You jump the law and then go to Abraham to pay tight. You are making a mistake. The fact that it was the law has made it God has made it a law. Titan was paid by Abraham by faith or by faith as they claim. But the fact that the law has made it a law, it is a law. You cannot jump it. Praise the Lord. I always give this an example. As the government in a country that the government said, initially government said, this one is a free of charge. Every minister should fuel his car without paying. And then that was the law for, uh, that was the free time for them. Then it got a point, then the minister said, uh, the same government said, this time around, every man, minister will buy a petrol or fuel to fill his car. Now, one minister came and said, as for me, hallelujah, I know that, as for me, I know that there's a law. Now, there's a law for, to, to, uh, for this thing, but I want to jump it. And go and do the, the, the former one. That I'm doing the former one. So when you go and then fill, fill his tank, he will not pay and go. When they ask him, so I, I, I'm living by the, the old, old time of freedom. Can you do that? That's how Christians, pastors are teaching people to do. That though God, God has made tight a law, but they can jump it and disobey. God's law and do the Abraham one. How can you do that? How can you teach this doctrine and it sounds good in the ears of people? It is a law. God has made it a law. At the time of Abraham, it was not a law. But now God has made it a law. You cannot jump and go to Abraham's time. No. Praise the Lord. You cannot do that. Amen and amen. So, we have to understand that about 90% of Christians are under the law. And according to Apostle Paul, he's afraid for them because if you are under the law, you are, you are under curse. And since you are under curse, you are not going to be justified in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord have mercy on us. So Moses did not do the right thing. Yet the water came for the people to drink. Hallelujah. And later on, God told him he cannot enter into the promised land. The same thing will happen to those who are seeing miracles and, and yet living by the law. At the end of the day, God will tell them, I don't know you. So I'm here to tell you that you must repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent from the law. And repent from your sins. Repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. This was the message preached by John. To prepare the way for the Lord. And the Lord has also commissioned some people in this generation. To preach the same message. And it must give a signal to you that it's a time of preparation. We are preparing the way for the second coming of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. So you are blessed to know that this is the time of receiving this message. According to the Bible, this was the message John used not only to prepare the way, but also turn the heart of the people and bring the people to God. Hallelujah. So this message has a capacity to turn your heart, even when your heart is far away from God. It has a capacity to bring that heart, deceptive heart, to the Lord, for the Lord to change it. Hallelujah. All that you need to know, or that you need to do, is to receive the message of the kingdom. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Let me tell you something. The Lord Jesus Christ said something in the book of John chapter 6, verse 30, uh, 63. 
that the words that I'm speaking, they are spirit. Hallelujah. The words that I'm saying are spirit. Meaning, the message of the kingdom that he preached, that repent, is a spirit. The kingdom of God is coming, is a spirit. So this spirit, hallelujah, bound together, enter into your soul as you believe it. Enter into your heart and begin to work on you. Hallelujah. Make the heart ready for God to come and stay in. Without having this word into your heart, hallelujah, you find it difficult to get Christ to stay in your heart. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you the truth. Is that a spirit that words I'm speaking are are, 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 are spirit. And this spirit, he preached, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. So the word repent is a spirit. And when you believe in it, it enters into you and begin to tense you around and bring you back to God. The kingdom of God is at, at hand. It's also a spirit. That makes you to now begin to have a kingdom mindness. You become a, a kingdom minded person. So that you can press into the kingdom. No wonder scripture says in the book of Luke chapter 16. 16 that when this message were preached. Repent the kingdom of God is at hand. People began to press into the kingdom. Because the word repent entered into their mind. Entered into their heart. Begin to turn them around. And then kingdom of God. The word kingdom of God. Is at hand also entered is a spirit entered into them and begin to cause them to press into the kingdom and if you're not hearing message like this and you are hearing other kingdom other other words what what will happen to you you press into something else that's why Christians are not pressing into anything as uh, some uh, 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 into the kingdom but they are pressing into Christmas Pressing into Easter, pressing into Sabbath observation, pressing into birthday observation, pressing into many, many things, which is, has nothing to do with the kingdom. Because the message that will cause us to press into the kingdom is not being preached to us. Today, if you have heard the message about the kingdom, you are blessed to hear this message because it has a capacity to turn you to Christ and make you a new person. May the Lord bless you. Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. The Lord bless you that you have repented in Jesus' mighty name. Mama Meg, Mama uh, 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 Kofi, and then uh, Irene, Colina, and every one of you who, on, who is on this platform. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Your commitment and everything shows that you really, really need the truth. You want the truth. Hallelujah. And may the Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. No, our time is far spent. Let me decree a blessing upon your life. The Bible says, A righteous man will decree a decree and shall be established. I believe and I know for sure that I'm a righteous man in the name of Jesus Christ by his grace. And I decree this grace decree upon your life. May the Lord satisfy you with his new mercy and compassion in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord satisfy you with his new mercy and compassion. By the new mercy and compassions of the Lord, may the Lord's beauty come upon your life. May the Lord's glory appear to your children. May the Lord God establish you in the name of Jesus. By his mercy and compassion, may the Lord deliver your soul from going into the lake of fire. In the name of Jesus, by his mercy and compassion, may the Lord save you from going into the lake of fire. May the Lord destroy every work of the devil against your life. By his mercy and compassion, may the Lord avenge you against your enemies. All those who are accusing you in the presence of God, anything that has raised against you in the judgment, may the Lord condemn it in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may the Lord contend with those who contend with you and save your household. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. My final prayer for you is that at the sounding of the last trumpet, you sound your, you find yourself with the Lord in his kingdom and be with him forever and ever. In Jesus' name, I decree this into your life. So shall it be. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. As I've been saying, by 23rd of this month, we are, we'll be in the city. One of the cities the Lord has allocated for us to go and then uh, uh, preach this gospel to deliver his children from the bondage of, of, of all the laws and all those things. And we are preparing going there. Hallelujah. Your support 
will be appreciated so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God richly bless you for being part of this uh, move of the Lord in this generation. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Amen. See you and bye-bye.